Shut the f up, oh, you yeah. little f Yeah? Yeah. Go ahead. Come on, get him out of here. Yeah, if being beat from pillar to post was a human being, huh, Tyson Fury was it. The gypsy king, they turned that man into the tipsy queen. You see, this life, man, you know, I always say karma has a way of working its way around the block. It's still gonna come settle on your porch. You think you, you know, did somebody wrong and then you think everything is just gonna go away and you just sail into the sunset that's a lie for a lot of y'all that somebody did you wrong and you think to yourself oh i see them they're still doing good i see them they're still happy i see them they're still nah son listen you do not want to know what's going on in their head you do not want to know what's going on inside their house things they can't even tell you i see all of that to say this was karma for tyson fury and it's been karma twice in a row for Deontay Wilder. And next week might be the final karma to nail his coffin. Before I go on, hit the like button, subscribe. Do not forget to hit the notification bell. Listen, me, I'm going to go a different route. And I've been calling it for years. You know, sometimes people do you wrong and in the process, they end up harming themselves. You know, they always say, if you want to dig a hole for somebody, you better dig one for yourself too because you might fall into it. When Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury was trying to embarrass Anthony Joshua and saying they're going to lock him out and freeze him out, what happened? First, Deontay Wilder met his disgrace. Now it was Tyson Fury's turn. And when Deontay Wilder met his disgrace, he was at the hands of somebody he labeled a friend, Tyson Fury. I don't know how... He thought that was going to work, you know, somebody that's supposed to be your adversary. You think he's just going to come there and let you get some shine off of beating him down and knocking him out. Well, unfortunately for Deontay, the bronze bomb of Wilder, it did not happen that way. Actually, it was a cherry pick that tasted sour in the end. As we all know, a trilogy that most of us I actually believe Deontay Wilder lost all three bouts. Then came Anthony Joshua, you know, he lost first to a little doughboy, the Mexican. Got his belt back, but not before the whole world turned on him and he was feeling the pressure. But then he redeemed himself by saving boxing from UFC, knocking out cocky, big mouthed Ngannou. Now, see, I always like to go philosophical with things, you know. I always like to look at things from a life point of view if that makes sense at least it does to me i always like to compare incidents like the tyson fury alexander Usyk match with life occurrences and when you look at what happened with tyson fury you know this in this life um most times when people want to get when god wants to get give them their comeuppance your adversaries that is especially if you've been wronged he disgraces them in pub in public. Now, if you don't believe in God, I, I don't know. I cannot apologize. Just uh, switch what I said using God. Just say the universe or karma. He disgraces them in public. Anthony Joshua, his haters will say he lost 24 rounds against Usyk. They'll say he lost uh, 20 rounds. He only won two. He only won three, whatever. I think it was 7-5 both times. Um, but what we do know is that he never took a beating like Tyson Fury did against Houston. We know that much. We know he wasn't beat, battered, and clobbered from pillar to post. And what was so crazy about this fight wasn't the fact that, I mean, at least personally, I did not, it wasn't like I didn't think Usyk was going to pull it off. Usyk is a, he's a very skilled boxer, you know, but I didn't think that he was going to do give that much punishment out to Fury because I was like a lot of other people I, I would presume were looking at Fury's size his length his reach you know and not to forget that he's a skilled boxer so at least personally I was not thinking he was going to get just totally disseminated and decimated and destroyed like that the big man sometimes can lose to a little man, but that's rare. You know, you you go back in time, not 
that long ago. You remember um, George Foreman and uh, Michael Moore. And everybody was thinking, okay, Moore is younger. George Foreman might be past his best. He's slow, he's big, he's heavier, he's overweight. But it was just one shot, one punch, and Moore was dead looking in the skies. But then you juxtapose that with Margarito versus Cotto, at least the second fight. Or you compare Primo Canera with Joe Lewis or Primo Canera and Max Beer. You know, and they gave him beaten to the big man that was in front of them. So I was more circumspect. I was probably thinking, yeah, more like it was probably a 50-50 fight. But I was thinking, not hoping, I was thinking Fury might pull through. I said not hoping because I actually wanted Usyk to win. And why? Fury is just this unstable character that he could win and who knows what games he's going to start playing when he has the belts in his possession. So I say all that to say when it was time for Fury to get his loss, remember when Anthony Joshua was losing and he was always there saying the worst of things to Joshua. He might wait a day or two and be nice and then his unstable mind kinks kicks in again and I don't think it's an unstable mind I just think by nature he's just not a very good person and his unstable mind and unstable character kicks in and he starts kicking that man while he's down which Joshua hasn't done to him yet but I hope he will I know if he was me I will I would have said some really really choicey things to him based on what he said to me in the past but then again knowing Joshua he's probably just waiting for a few more days so it'll sting when he does say so, <laughs> some ties of fear but yeah sometimes you know karma comes and bites you in the ass now just like Tyson just like uh Deontay Wilder yeah he got yeah Fury got all the money he he, he can spend you know like Frank Warren said earlier in an interview with Seconds Out Radio Rahim that he's got so much money he can never spend it all I, I, I hear that. Any money is spendable. If it has a number on it, it is possible to be diminished. So, but yeah, I get what he's trying to say. But now he's in the same position as Deontay Wilder where they have to beg for that Joshua fight. Ironically, Joshua is at the top of the, the food chain now. Even Ring Magazine has him as the number one heavyweight in the world. Yusuke is second. Regardless, there's no doubt in most boxing enthusiasts mind that at the top of the food chain now is Usyk than Anthony Joshua. Wilder might be like seven or eight. Usyk definitely has dropped, uh, Fury definitely has dropped to three, four, maybe five, you know, but that is how life works. You try to bite somebody not knowing that you're going to lose your dentures and your dentures are going to get stuck in their skin. You know, they should have took that Joshua fight when they had the opportunity. Um, now it's over. At least, even if we say uh, Fury sells off in the, into the sunset with all his money, what about Deontay Wilder? Made money, yeah, but not as much as he could have made. $120 million gone, which he could have made with Brazil. Another, like, two, $300 million he could have had a, 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 a fight with Joshua. Maybe he, at least, to be split between both of them. But yeah, that's it, man. Hit the like button, subscribe. Do not forget to hit the notification bell so you can get notified whenever I drop new content. Take care. Peace.